can you believe it is four years since we had the fight to get the greyhound industry back, one that we fought very hard on this show, lonely voice at first, but it you know, was us and Ray Hadley and the Daily Telegraph and eventually sanity had to break through because we cared about normal people being able to do what they love. And if you follow the rules, then you should be able to continue doing that, right? Well, the greyhound industry has uh, well flourished in many ways since, but also the people who run the greyhound industry have got some really nice ideas about what to do with a dog when it comes to the end of its racing life. Tony Mastrion is the CEO of Greyhound Racing New South Wales. We had a chance to talk to him a bit earlier today. It's a great experience, the dogs, definitely on a Saturday night, Paul. But we're absolutely booming. Greyhound Racing New South Wales and the industry is flying. 2019-20 has been our best year on record. Um, we, we've done our highest rehoming figure ever, up 83% to over 1,300 dogs. We've got, seen an increase in prize money over the last two years up 30 per cent. We've seen wagering go through the roof at 285 million increase to 1.78 billion and this year we look like increasing that to over two billion dollars and we made a 6.9 million dollar profit last financial year which we want to invest in our welfare and um, I know it's a rival network but we did our first free-to-air deal on Channel 9 after the preliminary semi-final for the million dollar chase next week and it's the, probably the biggest announcement we've had, so it really shows the industry is back. Mate, I love this. It'll be the third uh, TAB Million Dollar Chase. It'll be coming up in a couple of weeks. Watch it on Channel 9. I'll be watching it as well. Don't worry. You can watch Channel 9 through your Foxtel subscription as well. See? Keep everyone happy there, Tony. <laughs> now, um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> let's talk about... I'm, I'm saving both of us here. Now, um, let's yeah, talk here you. about um, uh, Greyhounds as Pets. Uh, it's a program which you guys have been running for, for quite some time, but you just talked about some of the success of all of this. What are the types of uh, homes and how is it changing since the program started? Yeah, it's hugely changed. I mean, we've seen Tim Cahill come on as the Gap Ambassador, the soccer legend. Tim has lifted the profile awareness of the program. Look, the dog is a really misunderstood. It's a placid dog. We call it the 60 kilometre an hour couch potato. <laughs> so it, it is really for any home um, and needs little exercise, short hair, really easy to look after. It would rather curl up next to you than actually go to the park for a run. So the dog is a beautiful dog. Um, we've done huge numbers last financial year but even into this financial year now um, we've seen a real spike um, in the popularity of the dog so it's really resonating out there I'm sure you see it Paul in parks all over Sydney and in Western Sydney people having greyhounds so um, we, we really have to concentrate on welfare of the dog um, we obviously want to have the life cycle from racing to rehoming that's really important and we need to rehome all of our dogs and that's the thing I mean we, we've we've now been able to show a clear path from the racing life of the dog to the majority of its life which of course is going to be post racing that, that's so vital because I've always believed this which is that uh, you know the, the people that are truly personally all in invested in the sports side of it well they are willing to give up things in their own life to make sure these dogs are taken care of and that basically means they want them to go to people who will pretty much do the same post racing life yeah, correct. And the participants do love their dogs. I mean, the industry closed four years ago and there was a line drawn in the sand that it wasn't good enough. And we all agree with that, Paul. But the people we didn't want in the industry, they're gone now. And the integrity is extremely important, but also the welfare of the dogs. And they do love their animals. And that story needs to get out of it. Look, Greyhound Racing New South Wales has welfare at the forefront of everything we do. And we want to make the industry better. And, and so do uh, the participants. Paul, we've just invested in a farm stay in the Hunter Valley where all dogs can go at the end of their racing life and it's all about looking after the dogs when they're finishing on that life cycle of racing to rehoming. We need to get more farm stays, we need more money to go into welfare and that's the mantra of racing New South Wales. We understand the sport and the industry but it's more important after racing that we place our dogs appropriately. By the way Paul, that farm stay, if the dogs can't be rehomed, they live there for the rest of their lives. So we really want to go to that point of unnecessary zero euthanasia and the dogs won't be put down or euthanized. So I think that's a really important message from Greyhound Racing New South Wales and the industry that 
the dog will live the rest of its life in a beautiful setting. Yeah, bloody oath. Now, if people want to uh, want to reach out and get one of these things, uh, uh, investigate whether it's the right thing for them to do, Greyhound Racing New South Wales website, or have you got specialised things that uh, people should know about tonight? Yeah, sure. You just need to go to um, our GAP New South Wales program. It's on our web page. Um, it's really important that people do rehome the dogs. They are in big demand, but you just need to get in touch and they'll fit the appropriate dog with the family because different families have more appropriate um, living situations. So we just want to make sure we, we put the dog with the appropriate person. All right. Just finally, how did, uh, did you keep the Greyhound racing sector going in the time of COVID? Um, no crowds is one thing, but also uh, crossing state borders and you know, country versus city borders, all of those little things that you've had to deal with. Um, are you glad that 2020 is almost over? <laughs> oh, Paul, look, in March it was, it was desperate times. We were the first um, jurisdiction to go to a regional model. Um, we closed down Wetworth Park, which was a huge call. The participants have been unbelievable. They've played their part. They've stuck to all the protocols. Also, um, you know, our Minister Kevin Anderson has been hugely supportive of the industry and we were able to then go to, from a, a period of difficulty to a period of record numbers in regard to wagering. Um, it's really gone through the roof during this COVID period and I suppose that leads into, we've got an RDA, Paul, and you'll know well about this, which is a racing distribution agreement where we're stuck into 13%, but our market share is 21%. So we really need to get our fair share, and we're looking for government to assist us in that so we can point to our welfare. So that's important as well. We're getting our returns. We're putting in, obviously, wagering partners and government earn a lot of money out of us, but we just want our equal share and a, and a fair go. Bloody oath, we'll help them in that fight.